visitors to Castringham Hall in Suffolk will almost certainly find it. Nothing has changed since the days when our story took place. They can still see the beautiful old house with its gardens and lake. However, one thing that is missing is the ash tree which used to be used. Standing proud and tall in front of the house, its branches almost touch the walls. The story begins in 1690 with a strange, lonely old woman. Mrs. Mothersoul, who was found guilty of being a witch. Sir Matthew Fell, then owner of Castringham Hall told how she used to climb the ash tree outside it. There was always a full moon in the bedroom. He said that he, a strange knife, was usually carried to cut parts of the tree. He talked to himself. Once he followed her home, but he disappeared. And when he knocked on the door of her house, he, she was sleeping in her nightclothes. That, and the villagers agreed that it was certain that he had done these things by magic. And so he was executed. Before she died, she fought and screamed. And his strange last words were the guests in the hall. After the execution, Sir Matthew felt uneasy and guilty. And he told his friend about his troubles, Dot you did. Right, Sir Matthew, were the wise words of the vicar. I am. I'm sure she was a dangerous woman. Sir Matthew was more than pleased. That evening, Sir Matthew and the vicar went for a walk inside. Castringham Hall Gardens. It was a busy night. The moon as they returned home, Sir Matthew pointed out to the ash tree in great surprise. What kind of animal is this? Running under an ash tree? It seems very strange. The vicar only saw the moving animal for a moment, but he thought that it had more than four legs. He shook his head. Must be tired, he thought to himself. After all, what animal has? More than four legs? He said nothing to Sir Matthew, but just wished him good night. The next morning, Sir Matthew's servants were surprised not to find him downstairs at his usual time of six o'clock. When seven o'clock and then eight o'clock passed, they began to suspect that something was terribly wrong, and they went up to his bedroom. The door was locked. After knocking several times and still getting no answer from inside, they broke down the door and entered to find that their fears were right. Sir Matthew S. body lay on the bed, dead and completely black. There were no wounds or other marks on him, and everything in the room looked as usual, except that the window was wide open. His servants, at first, suspected poison, but the doctor who was called found no such thing and could offer no real explanation for Sir Matthew's death. When he heard the news, the vicar rushed to Castringham Hall, and, while he was waiting to hear the doctor's opinion, he looked at Sir Matthew's Bible, which was lying on a table by the dead man's bedside. He opened the book, and the first words he read were from the book of Luke, chapter 8. Cut it down were the words he read. The servants locked Sir Matthew's room that day, and it stayed. Locked up for the next forty years. By that time, Sir Richard fell. Sir Matthew's grandson was living at Castringham Hall. He enjoyed spending money, especially on rebuilding parts of the hall. Family could have a fine new seat in the new part of the church. In order to complete this building work, some of the graves in the 
graveyard had to be moved. One of the graves was that of Mrs. Mother Soul, the old witch who began this story. The villagers were excited about the opening of her grave, and a crowd came to watch. However, they and the workmen were amazed to find them. Grave, completely empty, no body, no bones, no dust. At about this time, Sir Richard started to sleep very badly. The wind made his fire smoke and the curtains move, and room faced east. The sun woke him up early in the morning. One morning, he asked his servant to help him choose a better room, and he made a tour of the house, finding something wrong with each room. Each one was either too cold or too noisy, or it faced the wrong direction. Finally, he found himself outside his grandfather's old room. His servant tried to persuade him not to go in. It's a bad room, sir. They say terrible things happened in there. And no one has opened the door since the death of your grandfather. Also, the ash tree is right outside the window, and that's always unlucky, sir.